Transient shaping sounds complicated, but is it? I wanted to explore this powerful music production technique that sometimes gets forgotten about. With transient shaping, you are able to shape and process your sounds, and there are plenty of situations where you're better off reaching for a transient shaper first, even over EQ and compression. This simple but effective sculpting method is great to keep on hand in your mixing workflow. So let's start with the basics. What is a transient? Transients are the initial short duration peaks that occur at the start of the audio, such as the hit of a drum or the pluck of a guitar string. Every audio source consists of envelopes and a transient is a representation of it. For example, a punchy kick will have a sharp initial transient, whereas a softer, more pillowy kick will have a smoother initial transient. A transient shaper is a type of dynamics processor that focuses on modifying the transients of an audio signal. By adjusting parameters like attack and sustain, we're able to modify and shape the initial peaks of the sound, for example, by rounding off the attack to give the impression of a smoother sound or increasing the attack for a sharper initial transient. And we can also adjust the sustain level to shape and control the impact and duration of our transients. Transient shapers are considered to be a subset of dynamics processors and other dynamics processors include compressors, expanders, limiters and gates. As I mentioned, the two main controls you will see in most transient shapers are attack and sustain. In Isotope Neutron 4, a transient shaper can be easily added to your signal chain and you will see these transients represented in great detail as well as the way that they are being affected by attack and sustain controls. Let's have a listen to some before and after examples. Here I have a drum sample where I have increased the attack and lowered the sustain level. And this kind of gives the impression of drums being more punchy and in your face. And then I've also tried reducing the attack and increasing the sustain level for a smoother, more rounded sound. There's no right or wrong here. Experiment with these controls and see what works for you, your mix and your project. So how can we use this to our advantage? Here are some ideas and examples of transient shaping to inspire you. Using our earlier drum sample, I want to transform this further. What I'm looking for is a punchier sound in the low end of my drums, a punchier kick with a shorter sustain level, but a smoother, more rounded off sound in the top end. So how can we achieve this? In Neutron 4, you can split your transient shaper into three frequency bands. This is incredibly powerful for applying different transient processing to the whole instrument, as well as leaving some of the frequency bands completely unaffected. I can now sharpen and increase the attack of my low end while reducing the sustain level. And in the top end of my drums, I wanted to reduce the attack and increase the sustain. Take a listen to how it sounds before and after. I can also control how the transient shaper reacts to those sounds with sharp, medium and smooth controls, as well as precise, balanced and loose. Just like all the components in Neutron 4, parallel processing is made easy by simply using the mix slider. So transient shaping can be used across all instruments. For example, take a listen to this piano sound. Notice how as I'm reducing the attack and sustain, it softens the sound and also decreases some of the ambience around it. Then as I increase the attack, there's more harshness and presence while still keeping the sustain level quite low. And then as I am increasing the sustain level, it introduces more ambience into it. And then if I reduce the attack again, we get a smoother, more rounded off piano sound with still plenty of ambience going on.
So this is one of the ways that you can use transient shaping to help your instruments sit better in your mix by decreasing the attack. For example, in this piano, I can make it sit further in the mix or increasing the attack will give it more presence. I can also use transient shaping to control the environment of my sounds. This is a very exaggerated example of it, but it can be a very powerful way to manipulate your reverb. So just by adjusting the sustain on this guitar recording, I can increase the reverb or control it a little bit more and this could be very powerful for example if you are wanting to really open up the reverb in the chorus for example and then keep it more controlled during the verses there's so many different ways that you can use this to your advantage <laughs> In this example of a bass recording, there's a little bit of a buzz and a noise going on and I really wanted to clean it up. So take a listen to before and after of applying some transient shaping to further tame that background noise. Similarly, you could also use transient shaping to increase some of the guitar and string noises if you want to emphasize them in your project. I hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough on transient shapers. Experiment with these tools. They can be great for further taming and shaping the sonic qualities of the instruments you're working with, and they can be really powerful in your mix and production workflow. You can use them alongside EQ and compression, and even sometimes instead of those tools, like in our earlier piano example, using a compressor might have taken some of the life out of the piano and EQ in it might have processed the sound too much so actually transient shaping was a great way to achieve what I was looking for. Leave your own strategies on transient shaping in the comments below and subscribe to Isotope YouTube for more mixing tips and techniques.